good crowd of little people. That means the future is looking bright. Our scripture reading today uh, comes from Hebrews chapter 4, uh, just one verse, verse 12. But uh, previously in this chapter, uh, Paul's talking about um, the rest that's promised to God's people. You know, things kind of get hard down here sometimes, and if it gets hard, just remember that there's coming a day of rest for God's people. That's promised in the Word of God. And uh, so that kind of leads up to what Paul is talking about here, what God's Word is. Um, it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Praise the Lord for being able to read the word of the Lord today. Um, I spent about half of last week unable to talk. And I did like uh, uh, other people who said that we need to pray for what we need ourselves, as well as praying for other people. And uh, so I prayed for myself, and uh, the Lord answered my prayer. Now, Fleety said that she prayed, and the Lord answered her prayer. I think he answered both of them. So, uh, you know, so that's uh, that's the Word of God. It's quick and it's powerful. It does what it says it will do. Now, you know, you might uh, remember or wonder why and how can the Word of God do things that it seems like only humans could do or only God himself can do. But remember that this Word was made flesh. Okay. The Word of God and Jesus, the Son of God, are the same because He was made flesh. So it's powerful and it's quick. Let us pray. Father, again, we're thankful for the blessings that we enjoy. We thank you for all the good things that you give us, especially your Word, Lord. And we pray as we've read this portion of your word here today, Lord, that our minds and our hearts will be open to it. And Lord, that you might speak to us and give us that uh, which you have prepared for us in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> there are a lot of words in the world today. And if we want to hear them, we can just turn on the news and uh, on the TV and you'll get all kinds of voices. Uh, you'll get the voice of the government and the government tells you always the things you want to hear. <laughs> and... Uh, some of them are true and some turn out not to be true. Uh, and then education is the same way. You can get hear the voice of education. And uh, education's a good thing. But uh, I think some, there are some things that are being educated or, and taught to uh, our young pe younger people, particularly in colleges right now, that are that are not a good thing. 
Now, you may not agree with that, and I don't care if whether you do or not, but that's the way it is. They're taught some things that I, I, I think are against everything that we stand for as a nation, and they shouldn't be taught that. that. And I'll, I'll just stop right there on that one. But, uh, you know, there, there are things that you learn through words that are taught to you in business. And, uh, you know, business is in business to make profit. And uh, some of the words they tell you that are true and some are not. I was taught when I worked with an insurance company that we're all like one big family. No, we ain't. And you don't ever get you don't ever listen to that. You're not like one big family in business world, okay? Because when they get through with you, they'll throw you away and get somebody else. Now you just you keep that in your mind, okay? Because that's what happens in the real business world. Uh and and so you got a lot of voices out there, the voice of labor as well as business. You got the voice of that's spoken, you got the the voice that's written on paper. Uh you got all kinds of things clambering to take over your mind. Okay. But the word of God's out there too. Okay. The Bible is out there. And the Bible speaks to the soul and to the spirit of mankind today. And we hear what the Lord thinks through his word. If you want to know what the Lord thinks of you, all you have to do is read the word of God and the Bible will tell you what God thinks of you. Okay? Okay. It will tell you that God loves you. It will tell you that God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die in your place so that you could be saved. That's a great message that the world needs to hear today. But the Bible will also tell you that without Christ, you are condemned. Now, a lot of, a lot of people throughout the world don't like the idea that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And if you don't like it, you just take it up with God. You know, I mean, I didn't say it, he did. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The only way for us to be right with God and have our relationship repaired that was broken by sin is to go by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as our Savior, and that's the word that you get from the Word of God, uh, which is the Bible. It tells you about judgment, that judgment is coming. I mean, there are millions and millions of people, folks, listen. There are millions and millions of people today that are on the broad way to destruction, and they're going to be judged by whether or not they have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The broad way to destruction is the broad way to hell. Okay, there's only two destinations for mankind, and that is heaven and hell, and one is just as real as the other. You know, and a lot of people don't believe those things, but the Word of God tells us that plain as day. We all have sinned and therefore we're on our way. We don't have to do anything more to earn eternity in hell. 
The Bible says that we're condemned already. Not because we've committed one sin, but because we have a sinful heart and only Jesus Christ can change it and change our destination for all eternity. That's just the way it is. If you don't like it, take it up with God. That's what he said. And the truth of the matter is, we can also find out in the Bible, in the Word of God, that salvation is made possible for everybody, regardless of who they are, regardless of what they've done. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. God became, sent his son to become a substitute. James talked, we talked about that this morning in Sunday school. He, he is the substitute. He took our place on the cross of Calvary and died for our sins so that we could be saved. That's the story of salvation you find in the word of God. That's a word that the world needs to hear. Today, there are, but there's so many hindrances in the world. I mean, you got the government telling their story, okay, and and you got education telling their story, and business you got them telling, and labor and uh, even sports tells the story, okay. They all got a message that they want to get out to you, and sports will tell you that I am the way. I am the way. And some people swallowed it so big that they'll even forsake church on Sunday morning to participate in a sport. Take that home with you. Okay. Think about that. And think about, while you're thinking about that, Think about what you're teaching your child when that happens. You're, you're teaching your child that that's more important than church is. Now you can say, no, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that. You are doing that whether you think you're doing it or not. Our actions teach. Man, I better get off of that. <laughs> well, I thought I'd say it while I can, you know. <laughs> there are things, so many things out there that try to get our attention off of the word that God has out there. God. And, and every one of them saying, hear me, listen to me, do what I say. They're all doing that. But God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. Now the love of sin keeps some people from listening to God's voice, of course. You know, Jesus told a parable of the uh, sower that went out to sow seeds. And he said one of the things that caused one of the seeds not to produce was that they uh, had gotten, uh, they represented the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of sin. And so it can't produce like the good seed produces. And men, John the apostle wrote that men love darkness better than they like light. So they, uh, they continued in their sin. And it's the work of Satan to steal away the word of God from our hearts. 
to close our eyes and blind us to the truth of the word of God. And he seeks to keep us blind. He don't want us to open our spiritual eyes and see the Lord. And so he works on people all the time trying to distract them and trying to get them to take another path and the belief that people have plenty of time. Okay, That's another thing that keeps us and hinders us from hearing the word of God. I got plenty of time. So I'll do it later, okay? Let me just get through with what I'm doing now, and I'll do it later, okay? Let, let me get financially able to do what I want to do, and then I'll do what you say later when that's done. There's a lot of things that people want to get done before they take on something else. But I'm telling you, you don't have plenty of time. You just think about all the people that were here just five or six years ago that are not here anymore. Thank the Lord, a lot of them went on to be with the Lord. We're thankful for that. But there's none of us that have plenty of time it's like the man that said to a friend of his, he was trying to get him to listen to him about the Word of God. And he said, I'm planning on doing that before I die. He, he said to him, well, when are you going to die? said, I don't know. And see, none of us know that, do we? We, don't, we have no promise that we'll be here one more day. So we don't have plenty of time. That's a trick of the devil to get us not to put our attention on the Word of God and what God teaches us in Scripture. So all of those things will hinder us. And the revolt, results, of course, of not hearing what God's message is are drastic because there's coming a day when it'll be too late to hear it. Okay? Won't do you any good to hear it. Now is the day of grace. Now is the day of salvation. And if you will hear and listen to the word of God now, you can uh, take advantage of what the Lord offers you because one day the door is going to be closed. It will. Back in, uh, in Revelation, in the sixth chapter, the Bible talks about how there will be a day of wrath during the tribulation period, worse than anything that the world has ever seen before. It's God's wrath poured out on a lost and dying world. You see, God ain't just a God of love. He's a God of wrath and justice. And one day, the Bible says that there will be people, important people, like y'all, you know? Important people, 
really, really important people, distinguished people, rich people, poor people, average people will gather in the caves and the dens and rocks of the mountains and pray for the rocks and the hill to fall on them and hide them from the wrath of God. That's God's word. And so we don't want to wait. Nobody wants to wait until that happens because when that happens, it's too late. God will see to it that the sinner who's refused to hear uh, his word will reap what he sows. I mean, that's the law of God. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But there's a bright side to all that. Okay? If we do hear and believe the word of God, then God delivers us from judgment. Now, the judgment of God is hanging over the whole world right now. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But thank God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank God for that. That's the word of God. And the Bible says, he that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit says. You see, it's the Spirit of God that speaks the Word of God. And we can all be delivered from judgment. Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. So eternal life is available to everyone who hears and believes the Word of God. And it doesn't matter who you are. And it doesn't matter well, yes, it does. It does matter who you know. Because you have to know Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. Why would I never have been able to figure out why God do that for us. We ain't worth that. But he does it anyway. That's what grace is, isn't it? We don't deserve it, but we get it anyway. I hope you have it. Okay? The word of God in your heart. The life of God in your soul. If not, think about what had been said. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, we thank you today for all the blessings that you give us. We thank you for the opportunity that we've all had this day, Lord, because you granted it that we could come together here in your house to worship you today and to praise you, to sing the songs of joy, Lord, and to pray our prayers to you. 
We thank you for that, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be thankful and grateful for all that you've done for us, especially offering us salvation. And if there's one in our congregation today that don't know you, we pray, Lord, that they will come to know you today in the name of Christ. Amen.